forward event. So typically, like we've been doing over the last couple of weeks with um, any events or special uh, special announcements, we are uh, recording something as soon as we possibly can. This is the first event that I've missed live. <laughs> I, I did as well, even though I had the option, uh, but I was worried there would be some moments that I could just ignore. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'll just watch it recorded so then i can skip if anything is boring yeah. luckily nothing was boring but nah, it's pretty heavy pre-show typical ubisoft doing a lot of pre-show things um oh well, yeah, yeah talking about some stuff i mean they, they do a good job they put on a good show um but uh we're gonna jump right into it so you are listening to digital days gaming if this is the first time that you found us thank you so much for listening downloading if you're able to leave us a review we would greatly appreciate it if you found us by looking through uh looking for ubisoft coverage or any coverage of the games that we're going to talk about today we appreciate that and your subscription means a lot to us so if you could um you know share it with your friends retweet us follow us on the main account uh, like us on Facebook, all that stuff will be linked in the description. Uh, and if you've been listening to the show for a long time, you know that the best way to help us is to just get more eyes on the show and help us grow. And one of the ways that we can do that is by covering as many events as possible, such as this Ubisoft Forward event. So this will show up on the feed as a bonus episode, and we will still record another episode this week as well. Um, all right, so let's uh, get right into it. So first off, uh, they released a tweet uh, a couple hours before the event. You want to go over that? Yeah, so Ubisoft, uh, if you've been following the regular show, uh, they have had a series of allegations made against employees all over their industry, or all over like their, their staff, from HR to community managers to directors of games. So going into this event, they, they had to address it. Uh, they came out early on uh, in the day to say that Ubisoft Forward comes out during a time of big internal change because all the content has been pre-recorded. We wanted to recognize that the issues we're currently dealing with won't be addressed directly in the show. We still have significant work to do and are committed to this process. We will provide more updates soon. So because this was a pre-recorded event, they didn't want to address it. I didn't expect them to address it in this very consumer-facing video because it just would be odd, especially with the various allegations uh, going against employees. It would just be weird if they did. I'm glad they released a statement so you couldn't come out with a hot take afterwards that they didn't address it during the video, uh, if that makes sense. Right. You know, they, they, but it, they prefaced it. it. Yeah, to add to your point, it would also be weird because there are probably the majority of people that are video game fans or Ubisoft fans or even fans of the with a, so much stuff leaking over the last couple of days for this event for the, somebody to turn this on and watch this and they lead with something like that like that would be very weird to people like I don't know what's going on like what are you talking about like because it's it, it, you we know about it because there are some people that we interact with that have been mentioned in this and there are we follow tons and tons of streamers and community people and 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 we are we're involved in this industry so we see a lot of it and there's been a lot of um just cross relationships of friends of friends or friend of a friend you know so we obviously see it more but the average consumer wouldn't know who these people are like if you went up to even an a, a, a hardcore assassin's creed fan and said hey who produces the game i would bet money that they couldn't tell you yeah for sure and it, it is an ongoing thing uh so ongoing that Yesterday, Saturday, J July 11th, or it might have been Friday, uh, they announced three people were resigning, two of which had a ton of allegations against them. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce some of these names, uh, but I usually have heard this person's name just because uh, he is the chief creative officer, Serge. Mm -hmm. uh, his last name I, I can't pronounce, I'm sorry. Uh, it's like Hes Hescati or H Hescote. Uh, he was like, Beyond the CEO, the co-founder, Yves, he was second in command in terms of he would be able to green light or shut down a project. So he was considered untouchable among, amongst like the, the, the employees of Ubisoft. So he has resigned uh, due to everything that's happened. Uh, and then you have Giannis Mallet, who's the CEO of the Canadian Studios, also has a bunch of allegations against them. They resigned. And then also the global head of HR, uh, Cecilia Cornett, resigned. There's no known allegations against that person other than the fact that... She's the global head of HR. <laughs> yes, exactly. And a lot of stuff happened that was reported to her that went 
unreported or to that person. Yeah. Uh, so that person, Cecile uh, Cornett, it it just made sense that they they resigned just because all the stuff that's happening, it's it's really hard for, for the company to be like, we are going to change and then have the same people in charge right. of those departments. So those people all resigned or were let go, but, you know, it's executive world, so people just resign. They don't actually get fired. Mm-hmm. And so Ubisoft is making changes, so they are doing a lot of things, and then there's still a bunch of stuff against some community managers and some producers, like the Assassin's Creed producer, or director, actually, mm-hmm. uh, is currently going through an investigation. So there's a lot of moving parts, but like they couldn't open this show being like, hey, these three people that you may have never heard of right. are, are resigned. So... Do we and we just wanted to get this stuff up front just because we don't want to ignore all of Correct, this because yeah. this is like major stuff. Uh, but they did this away from the show, so now we will jump into Ubisoft Forward and talk about some of the games that they that they presented in this relatively short. It was like forty five minute yeah. presentation. Um, so the the first thing that i noticed that um a little bit of a personal note is like i love to see like the people that we have relationships with move up um neelam has been somebody that's been very nice to me from for years of helping do things and getting us into the ubisoft press conference and yusuf is a very good friend of mine um from uh we knew each other even before he was working for ubisoft pr just again because it was a friend of a friend thing and we played games together so to watch these people like you know kind of grow up and evolve in their jobs is always kind of cool so they both got to host this and that was really cool to see so that's um michael's had a little bit of interaction with neelam and um almost none with yusuf and i run into yusuf sometimes at events and it's just a good he's a good guy so it's, it's really cool so yeah and just watching like he was an intern like four or five years ago and now he's one of the lead you know uh streaming hosts that they have so it's really cool to see um they started off with watchdogs legion uh which is uh, something that obviously got pulled off the table earlier. We saw it at, at, at E3 last year. Uh, it got dated, and then it said, uh, we're delaying it, and we're not telling you until when. Um, and uh, typical uh, Ubisoft fashion that they've been doing over the last couple of games, they uh, showed... At first, when I was watching this, I'm like, they're not showing anything. Like, what is this? Like, is this CG? And then we find out it's a short film inspired by the game. Um, yeah, I was really confused by it, because yeah. I was like... I is this real people and then you would see some animation stuff and you're like wait is this gameplay or not not gameplay like in engine cutscene yeah. i was really confused by it it looks cool so now what i don't know is like was this the whole film i have no idea will yeah. this be released on amazon like the previous stuff yeah because they've done something for done? far cry they did something for ghost recon uh breakpoint so they've done a couple things the far cry ones were really cool um uh just kind of telling you know deeper into the story so but they did go right into gameplay after that, uh, showing the video showcasing dozens or so of characters that you can play as during uh, during a, during the missions. Uh, again, just doubling down, which uh, which I'm happy to see because it was something that you and I were both very concerned about. Um, but they're doubling down on the you know any character anywhere any origin story. Um, but at the same time, I still have my concerns because they they actually showed a scene of two different characters. But the, the him, them talking to somebody in a computer monitor saying the exact same line and then the other character, two different characters again, pretty much saying the same thing, but different. Yeah, I, I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of that throughout this game. And also, I think it's going to be way more restricted than when we first saw the game. Mm-hmm. Like when we shot, we saw this clip, it's like, here are the like. 15 players or characters you can use for this mission as opposed to like the first trailer of like any single npc is playable it looks like it is going to be more refined and that this might be limitations for hardware yeah. but yeah i have a feeling that for cutscene purposes or anything uh where you, one of your npc or playable characters talks to someone there might just be like a, a swap of a couple different like yeah, and I guess what I, what I just hope though is that as you're selecting characters, because what they showed us showed us this before that you're kind of like looking into their background and you're figuring things out. They'll they'll have strength and they'll have weaknesses and they'll have abilities and like almost like a class system, and that'll kind of should 
help you decide if you like to have a balanced team. Um, and then they didn't talk about it during this event, but the game does have permadeath in it. So if you lose your character, like they're gone. If they die or they if they die, they, they're dead. You have a chance, I believe, to give up and you can be like uh, captured and then you can have your other characters like save them. But if you choose to like do a second wind and then you die, like you're done. So all your leveling and everything is gone. All your upgrades are gone. I just hope that if you're picking, you know, the drone specialist and then you're picking like the aggressive like enforcer that their origin missions don't end up being very similar and like i just hope that there's at least if they put and i don't even know the number but 12 to 16 different style missions in there i don't really think people as they play through this game are going to be recruiting more than 16 characters yeah i don't i don't expect that either i have a feeling based on like the special class or whatever those all origins will be the same. Yeah. So there, what do like you think? The, like six or eight classes, maybe even if, if that many, four to six. Yeah. And no matter what character you pick, like what version of that class you pick, their origin is going to be pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling no matter what, like the old, the old lady that every, that they keep showing. And then people really like to like focus on. I'm sure there are like five different versions of that old lady. Mm-hmm. And, but the they're all the same old lady the mission. Same. So, yeah, yeah. I, that this makes sense, like logistic wise. So mm-hmm. I've this is going to be one of those things where once we see it, we'll probably be able to poke holes in. Yeah, it's still a really cool. It's, it's, just, it's still a really cool concept, and I hope that they do. Or they are able to surprise us with enough that where it doesn't feel samey. And I just mm-hmm. I don't want to like be you know six hours into the game and I lose one of my characters that I'm really attached to, and then I go after you know, recruiting somebody else of similar attributes and then like go back and almost do the exact same thing I just did six hours ago. Like I don't really want to do that because I lost the character. So I hope that there's at least a little diversity in it. Yeah. I have a feeling for the casual or the one and done playthrough, it's going to be pretty solid yeah. and you're not going to see many holes. It's going to be the completionist uh, players, yeah, the ones I want to see have every to, bit of content. Know, unlock a character for each version of class to get the platinum or something. You know? Yeah, <laughs> they are going to be the ones that are going to get frustrated and will probably see like issues, you know, throughout their playthrough or right. multiple playthroughs. I have a feeling if you're just going to play this game one time and Re- recruit you're not, three to and you're, six characters, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to be fine and you're going to be impressed by like the amount of content you see from that. It's when you decide, I oh, there's. 50 characters that I could play as and you want to lock all 50, then you're going to start seeing the yeah. flaws. But if you just want one or two characters per class, you'll probably be really impressed with what they do. Yeah. And so, I, I honestly would be that player probably. No, just yeah. play it once. Yeah. Through I mean, I enjoyed like, Watch Dogs 2 tremendously. Like just a, just the gameplay mechanic of it. It was, it was, it was so much fun. Um, and then they showed off like a construction worker who carries a wrench and a nail gun as, as, as his primary weapon. Um, they showed off a drone expert, uh, use her own hacks and she can actually, uh, hack enemy drones. So they're kind of like, Oh, if you don't want to like get in the grit, um, you don't have to, and you can actually recruit, Albion officers, which is the the corporation that's supposed to be protecting London, um, you know, soccer hooligans, uh, professional. I like that one. Yeah, a professional hitman. So they were showing off a couple more characters, um, and I think it's kind of cool because you can kind of it, it's that play your way aspect of like I really you know I still remember like playing Watch Dogs two where I would try not to like enter the building until like I had it really scouted out like I really wanted to play that way and I was using the remote control cars and the drones and the hacking and the you know. And the, and the distraction tools versus just... Because I have enough games that I play that I can go in there and slide around and shotgun everything if I want to. And so, like, being able to play it differently and, and figure out things that are, you know, what's what's fun for the player and then say, hey, you know what? Uh, this time I want to do this and I want to just hit everybody with the blunt end of a shotgun. So I'm just going to do that. So I think that having those, those kind of choices are cool. Um, it's just one of those ones that I just hope the mission structures... And it's an inter- you know the campaign missions because I'm assuming this is going to have a, a somewhat linear open world style campaign. Uh, yes, I realize that's like a broad sentence I just used, but uh, there'll yeah. be spots on the map that are missions that no matter what characters you have, the missions are, are the same. Like I fully expect that. I just hope that the, you don't feel because you have a drone expert and you don't have an enforcer that you feel restricted. Like that's what I hope doesn't happen. 
Yeah, that it's open enough that you won't regret, like, the path you've chosen, basically. Or, or feel like you have to go get one to complete the mission. Like, that I don't ever mm. want to go in and do the mission and realize, hey, you know what, I don't have the the drone expert or the you know the that the the correct hacker and i have to go find this person just to complete this mission i want it to be able to allow somebody to i guess maybe play through with ever not killing anybody and also be able to kill everything and break every door you know yeah that, that makes sense because their pitchiness is play whichever way you want and that would force you to play specific ways uh the only concern I have for the game, because everything they showed looked actually really fun to play. The only thing I'm having, and it's a problem I have with most games from Ubisoft that aren't Assassin's Creed, is the world is super serious. Mm -hmm. And the cutscenes are super serious, but then the gameplay is open world shenanigans. Yeah. And... When I was seeing watching the cutscenes and and they're you know it's like police state Brexit type stuff and like the people rebelling against the government and like I mean they showed in the, they showed right. in the trailer the head of the company shooting the police commissioner in the head yeah <laughs> so yeah like, which is like it's it's over exaggerated yeah. but it was definitely certain aspects of it where I'm just like. Some of this stuff is kind of happening in the real world, and then they're like, oh, you can play as a drunk hooligan, and I'm just like, oh, man, I hope they can find a good balance yeah. between that. Uh, I, that I think I, they did in Watch Dogs 2, because Watch Dogs 2 was like taking taking place during like an election campaign, um, mm -hmm. and you were trying to build, you know, uh, build followerships and to, to, to expose somebody, and they've... Mm -hmm. it, it, they almost like push the envelope far enough. Like they keep pushing the crate to the very, very edge and then they never push it over. They didn't do it in Far Cry with the, with, in Far Cry 5 with the cults and the religion. Um, they didn't do it in Watch Dogs with the political aspect. They got really, really close, you know, um, and they've gotten close a lot of times and they, they, they start pushing the edge and you're like, are they going to do it? And then they don't. And it's just like, okay. Like, so they push the envelope far enough. Uh, not that it, you know, it would matter either way, but um, I just want to see somebody sometimes, like, really just break the wall. Yeah, break the wall is one thing, but it's definitely one of those things where society in real life is getting close to breaking that wall. Yes. So it's one of those and, things and, where... And again, I just feel like they're a victim of circumstance of, like, when they started developing this game two and a half years ago, they didn't know that this stuff could, you know... Like, yeah, exactly. So, so it's just gonna... It, the, and it's coming out during, like, election season, so it's yeah. gonna be interesting. At least on the North American or the, the United States side of just seeing this and be like, oof, okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, be curious just, to how far they push the the third party corporation controlling a city, you know, against the against uh, what appears to be against maybe the prime minister's wishes. Mm -hmm. So it'll be pretty interesting to see. I, I gave this game an award, an E3 award when I've seen it. Like I'm very interested in it. I, like I said, I, I, I really enjoyed Watch Dogs 2. I didn't give Watch Dogs 1 a fair shake. And a lot of people are like, don't even try, you know, um, just because of some of the gameplay that's in there. Some people said that I, sh you know, it doesn't have any, uh, any attachment. So, um, and the the each game doesn't appear to there was some attachment in two to one, but it was mostly mostly like Easter egg driven. I expect there to be some Easter egg driven stuff attachments for Legion to to two and one as well. But if you've never played one or two, I don't feel like you'll be lost if you play Legion. No, and especially because it's taking place on a different continent. Yeah. It's, well, you know, it's different not country. called Watch Dogs Three for a reason, obviously. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, uh, which probably expands them for the fourth Watch Dogs game will probably take place in a different country or, you know, different horrible world circumstance that well, is and, and, potentially and close we'll to talk real. about it near the end, but I think after a certain point in time where you just need to start calling your games Watch Dog colon something, like, continuously numbering your games gets a little crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. uh, okay, uh, and then the game's coming out October 29th. Yep. Uh, we don't know. It is going to come to the next-gen consoles, uh, but we don't know. It'll support smart delivery on Xbox. Yeah, so we don't know exactly, you know, like the next version will be available because we don't know when the new consoles will be available. But October 29th for PS4 and Xbox One, and who knows, maybe possibly the Series X and PS5, depending on when those get released. They won't be out before October 29th. <laughs> no, probably not. It might be a week after October 29th yeah. they'll be out. Uh, okay, and then after that, we got just quick trailers for mobile versions of Brahalla, um, which 
apparently does really well. Mm -hmm. I know there's a a community behind that game, uh, but a lot of the Ubisoft games have communities that I just don't know exist (laughs) for a lot of their smaller stuff. Yeah, it's it's going mobile. A lot of people really like the game, and it it always looks cool, but it just looks looks like a game I'll just get my ass kicked in if I play it. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. same uh okay and then might and magic got another trailer uh nothing new for for that game on mobile devices other than like if you download today or this week there'll be bonuses uh so there, there there's that mm-hmm. um and then tom clancy's elite squad which was shown off last year this is coming to android soon this is just ubisoft's overwatch kind of like it's just like famous characters from ubisoft yeah. like they showed S- sam fisher uh in there from splinter cell and i forget even what type of game this is gonna be i know we saw gameplay last yeah, year i but... don't i don't know a ton about it and it's kind of one of those things where usually when you talk about a mobile game it's coming out like then or within like 30 or 60 days of talking about it and now we're like almost over a year so like i'd be really curious to how this this functions it still looks really interesting um, in terms of what they may or may not be trying to accomplish with it. Um, but we'll have to see. No. Uh, after that, we got uh, a thank you video to the 60 million players for Rainbow Six Siege. Still fascinating. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah five years uh, that game's well, been out. And even in the thank you video, they talked about all the problems that they had. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then a small team. Like I guess I didn't realize that as well. Is it seems like that I think they were a little bit surprised at how at launch how much following the game got. You know, good, bad, and indifferent because they you know they were talking about a small team and what it's involved into now um, in terms of it being a top esports game and a top competitive shooter um, is is so fascinating. But it's just one of those things where I just wonder if they thought that this game was going to come out and just hang around for a little while while they were working on something else a little bit more story driven and then it just it took off even in, in yeah. a, even in a rough state it took off yeah it, it took off and it looks like it's not stopping any time soon mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely become its own platform that will We'll probably see it at the next, you know, Ubi Forward. Uh, it coming to next gen consoles, mm-hmm. uh, and it'll probably be a platform for a while. It's it's definitely going to be one of those games that they're probably going to have to decide at one point: do they continue it as a platform, or do they try and make a Rainbow Six Siege two, mm-hmm. uh, which is you know something we've seen with other games where. You know, you have to decide, are, are there enough people coming to the platform? But with 60 million people that have made accounts, at least, you know, they right. say there's 60 million players, but we know that's not a concurrent number or anything like that. That's just total downloads. But I guess it's strong enough for them to stay committed to, to this game, or at least... Especially not going committed. free to play either in the seasonal content and, and you know, keeping... I don't, I, I, be, I don't know the exact number of active players or players that have logged in like this season, but... They continuously release new operators, and it's one of those questions of like how how many more operators can they go before a game like this needs a, a fresh reset, you know? Yeah, but then you also have to go into the problem of if we do a fresh reset, do we have to carry over? Yeah, you know. And then how much crap? Do, how much crap do you get when you bring a, when you do a fresh reset and you bring out new operators? They're like, that's just like the one we had before. You're making me yeah. pay for it again. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling the next thing we hear about Rainbow Six is like crossplay. Yeah. Like I feel like that would be the next move for them. And Ubisoft isn't afraid of crossplay. They do it for their VR games. Mm-hmm. That's probably going to be the next step for them. They're probably just not quite ready to talk about it. They'll probably wait for them to release it on the next gen consoles. And then once it's on the next gen consoles, crossplay is enabled and the game has several more years of legs under it because of that. Right. Uh, what else? What after, did they show after that? Dave? Uh, so they showed. They talked more about Hyperscape. They released Hyperscape um, in like a super closed format to a lot of streamers and content creators about a week ago now. Um, and Hyperscape is a uh, currently a PC based battle royale that takes place in a digital world uh, essentially. And you can pick up like the you know you can pick up these hacks on the fly, kind of like as you're looting areas and finding things you find new uh, hacks which are kind of like abilities or specials that you can use whether it's like a slam or a you know like a blink ability or or, you know there's a lot going on uh i've watched a couple streams of these games and there is a lot going on with a lot of movement and a lot of verticality 
Yeah, um, it's like Quake Unreal Engine or, or Unreal Tournament yeah. uh, amount of. I was I was fascinated with happening. the verticality, and I was also fascinated with how many places you could actually go inside, like mm-hmm. the buildings and things like that. You could go in and the movement. It's you know, um, and it's currently only on PC. Um, so the new trailer for the battle royale that's being you know that's been tested. Um, it takes place in 2054. Technology went too fat. Blah 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 blah. Uh, corporations made a VR game that everyone participates in. And it sounds like you can gain notoriety um, by obviously by doing well, but there's obviously issues going on. Um, and the open beta is now on all uh, is available to everybody on PC. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And then they did a deeper look into character design, and they're talking about seasons again. So th- I, I just they're they're trying to hit that Fortnite Apex itch. I, I don't blame them. Um, it seems to be something successful enough, and the seasonal content is proven to work. Um, I just hope they start talking about consoles soon because I like the what I what I see on the game in terms of what I see on PC. I, I don't know if this could run on current gen. Uh it probably could. I think it could. Like I know it's moving pretty crazy, but they could probably hit sixty frames on current gen, right? I, it, probably. It's a big world. I mean, I guess if Call of Duty can put two hundred players on the field, like maybe they can. I mean. I, the the biggest thing that I have like the the concept behind this is cool. The battle royals are are fine. Like I understand that there's a huge player base for those, and I get it. I I've tried to check some of them out. I probably will give Hyperscape a try just to get my butt kicked again. Um, but uh, the thing that bothers me the most, I guess, and I you can maybe speak to this a little bit more with Overwatch, is that the continuously trying to tell a story in a battle rail always seems kind of weird. Apex is trying to do that as they introduce new cl- character class. And it almost feels like you care about it for those five minutes while you're watching the cutscene. But then it's like, okay, either the character fits my play style or they don't. Yeah. A- anytime games are trying to tell like a world story, but around a battle royale or a multiplayer game, it there's it feels, like a, it feels co- flat. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's just a disconnect for that to where I don't really care. Like when I was watching the trailer, I was just like, oh, there's a story. Like, does anyone truly care that there's a story? Are you downloading Hyperscape because the story got you? Or are you downloading Hyper- Hyperscape because it's a battle royale and you enjoy playing battle royales? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you enjoy to play it so you can hear, you know, strangers call you horrible names. Like, <laughs> you're not paying attention to the world building. It's cool. The game has a, a a great look to it and design so i'm not knocking that but yeah i don't think anyone that's going to get into this game is going to be in it for the lore yeah and uh, it's not a surprise that it, as big of a publisher as ubisoft is for them to to throw their to throw their hat in the in the battle royale ring it's it's almost expected at this point so mm-hmm. and they they've proven with pretty much every game they release is they They'll will support the hell it. out of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> So if it doesn't hit, uh, just give them two years and, yeah. and they'll make it They'll make it work. Uh, so after they talked about Hyperscape and saying that beta is open for everybody, they brought Phil Spencer onto the show. Uh, he talked about Watchdog Legion will support smart delivery. Legion, not legions, sorry. Will support smart delivery um, like we already talked about. And then he, he announced that um, Ubisoft's team has uh, you know been able to, to produce ray tracing on next gen, on Series X. Um, and they talked about that for, I believe, for Valhalla and for Watch Dogs. Yes, yes, yeah. I believe so. So, and then that led right into um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, obviously, we've seen the reveal at Xbox for this, um, or the the announcement of the game with a small reveal. Then it was at the Xbox third party event, and now it's at their Ubisoft Forward event. Um, you know, humanizing Vikings farmer aspect uh, was talked about. Producer talks. I, I like that part. Yeah, <laughs> just because when you think of Vikings, you don't yeah. really think about farming. I, I, uh, I know so some people. That. Some people were concerned um, just because of the precedent that they've set with previous Assassin's Creed games. You can play as a male Viking or as a female Viking, so they they got that out of the out of the way right away. I feel like that was a lingering question, but I also feel like it was kind of one of those things where yeah, it'll happen. It's expected. Um, mm-hmm. Especially the, after Odyssey. Yeah. So the producer talked about the field research, the uh, in-game footage time. Uh, the largest variety of variety of enemies in an Assassin's Creed game. Um, you know, they showed enemy coordination, which was kind of big because I don't know if you've played enough Assassin's Creed games, but there it was always comical when you're playing Assassin's Creed. They've gotten better over the years, but oftentimes you'll be against ten people, 
Yeah, yeah, they'll you're, just you're get fight, in a circle around one you. And nine are around you. Yeah. Yeah, and they just watch until you kill their friend, and then it's like, okay, now it's your turn. Uh, so yeah. they, they finally are fixing that to some extent, which I have a feeling just means smaller groups that you will fight in, <laughs> and they'll like team up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at least they're addressing a, a lot of different things yeah. uh, in Assassin's Creed with this one. Yeah, they talked about a stun system and a dual wielding. Dual wielding. Uh, the dual wielding system looks really cool. Um, the stealth obviously is as an assassin's game, um, a hunting and forging regains health and then assault. That scares me. Yeah. Have fun storming the castles. What concerned me about what they were showing was, you know, moving down like this is that, that, you know, going from point A to point B and seeing 14 shiny figures, shiny, uh, uh, shiny objects. Like that's mm-hmm. a little bit concerning to me because a lot of times, like I really want to see the story that they're telling, um, you know, whether they're still telling the story about the Arbalist, or I don't even remember what it's called anymore. But, um, you know, is it going to still evolve, evolve around the time the time travel ancestor mechanic? Um, you know, is that even a thing anymore? I haven't, you know, the, Des- the Desmond uh, aspect that they had for years. Um, and then the building your home base based on getting other, like, it just looked very, I, I, immediately I'm like, I, I don't want to, play this game right away because i feel like i'm going to be very overwhelmed yeah like when they showed the 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 hunting stuff and the the foraging i was just like oh no that this seems way more in depth than i that i want Uh, i'm still interested in the game despite that Uh, but if there's when i see like that level of detail going into it that's usually when i knock a game down to easy yeah. Uh, just to, to yeah. save myself the trouble but, but of you having also, to engage it, too much. It's also the worry of if I don't do that, am I going to have a hard time doing this next mission because I don't have mm-hmm. the tools or the abilities or I'm not a high enough level. Um, so anytime that a, a campaign driven story game, and I guess Assassin's Creed's moved, moving away from that or has moved away from that for the most part. It, it's still there, but it, there, the side missions in the world is what it's more about. Um, that aspect always concerns me a little bit because I I really want to see what the, the, the Viking story is. Mm-hmm. But am I going to have a hard time seeing what the Viking story is because I didn't take over that little town that I that I rode past on the boat? Yeah. Did your nice farming Viking raid that little village yeah. that would give you more story? And I, I just don't want to... like. We know Valhalla, and then we'll talk about you know Far Cry later. Those games are going to have that Ubisoft structure that all their open world games mm-hmm. have had for the last five years. Cause they, you know, they, they just started to talk about like, they want to move away from like the standard structure that all their games kind of play the same. Right. Uh, so I'm fully expecting myself having to like take over villages. So then I can cleanse that zone. And then oh, well, they showed be... that map of allies yeah. and, and, what, yeah, and I'm that... just like, Oh boy. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of that. Am I not going to be able to upgrade my weapons unless I, like, skin 30 deers? Yeah. (laughs) If I'm going to fall into that same structure, which has kept me away from Assassin's Creed as they've gotten bigger and larger, I've moved away from the franchise. I I have friends that love this game, and they're like, oh, I put, you know, 57 hours in, and I'm only, you know, 60% of the way through the game. I'm like, I'm out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like I, I want to see like this story with the Vikings, like because mm-hmm. it's a so. I feel like the Vikings aren't truly like an explored thing, except for like maybe the last ten years, or right. may, maybe less than that, five years, uh, with like TV and, and video games and movies. Mm-hmm. So I want to see their take on it. So I'll probably pick up the game when it comes out, mm-hmm. uh, but it's. I, I, I want to see the story more than I want to play this game. Yeah, for and sure. I, I don't want to watch like a YouTube video of someone playing the game just because they'll probably have to engage in the grinding and all that stuff. So it'll definitely be one of those games that I'm going to have to pick up and just kind of like blinders on and see how far I can get in the story without like having to engage with the dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of yeah. like side content. And that's fine. Like if those people love the game and they love the combat and they love the, what it, what it gives them, like I'm all for it, but I just, I just concerned about punishing the player that maybe doesn't care. And that's mm-hmm. always a hard balance to have in, in games. It's a very, very hard balance. Some games nail it. Some games don't. So. Yeah. Um, and then um, this guy, Eve's 
Yves Gilmont. Gilmont, uh, who is the co-founder and CEO, uh, came out and says, you, you know, talking about, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And pretty much he said that there's going to be another one. There's going to be another Ubisoft Forward later this year, uh, which is good because there's a handful of games that we know about that weren't even mentioned during in this at all. Yeah, um, we can. Yeah, we'll talk about those like after the one more game. So they did the one more game, and like this is where uh, what I hinted at earlier of like, okay, like this is called Far Cry Six. They started. Yes. They started. Like they did Far Cry Five. They did Far Cry New Dawn, and or no, I'm sorry, was it? It was called Far Cry Five New Dawn, right? Actually, I don't remember. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, but then this is Far Cry Six, and they, uh, you know, they showed a, a, a TV style opening sequence, um, and then really uh, uh, revealing that it's Giancarlo Espo- Esposito. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what is he known for being in? Because I can't speak to this. Uh, Gus Farine from Breaking Bad. He's considered like his role in Breaking Bad is like one of the best, like crime lord kingpin uh like roles in like modern television like he's like up there with like scarface in terms of like drug lord like villains yeah. in, in like media so getting him is is a big deal and it looks like they'll just have him do that but on a grander scale because yeah. of the role he is playing in this one. Yeah. So they show him as, as, role. as playing the president of a country during a revolution and teaching his child about how to be a leader using a grenade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 which is creepy. Uh, yeah. So we, we, we still don't know who the kid is. There's like rumors that this might be a prequel. Uh, we don't really know if, if that to be the case, uh, but he's teaching his kid how to be a dictator, basically <laughs> how to be, a leader by putting a grenade in this kid's hands, pulling the pin from it, and then basically just kind of just seeing if the kid's willing to drop the grenade on some people mm-hmm. uh, and just telling them that you just need to like take things. It's really dark. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm still curious who are we even going to play <laughs> in this. Well, game. and that's the thing that like with with the Far Cry games, and I I spent an extensive ex- extensive amount of time with Far Cry Five and Far Cry New Dawn. I want to go back and play like three and four just because of the time I have uh, the playing those games and it being a first person shooter style aspect game. It's never about the player. Like they they truly are are ones that nail that this is you. Most of the time, you're kind of unknown or you're just like deputy or sheriff. Um, and it's always been about the villain, whether it's the cult leader or, you know, the twins in the Far Cry uh, 5 and New Dawn series. Um, it's it's always the focal point is the villain. And then and it's the, it's you're learning you're getting the villain story through the character's eye. You're not getting the character's eye. It's it's just this person, guy or girl that's stopping whatever's happening. And, and you get to see the whole aspect of the story of uh, it's uh, of the villain. So the villain is the focal point of the game, not the hero. Yeah. Uh, which is always an interesting concept in that they point. do it very well though. Yeah. Like, they, yeah they, they, they do. They've do proven well. like three, four five that, you know, that they can do it. Um, and those, th- those characters are more known or more well known than the, the, the player you play as because they yeah, again the it's, it's first person there's a little bit of like outfits which I never really understood because you never really look at it um, the concern obviously the uh, the concern and expectation hand in hand goes probably co-op because they've done co-op over the last couple of games and then the immediate like it was even in our Facebook group later, earlier today the immediate questions about co-op progression because they seem to always mm-hmm. struggle with nailing that correctly of like oh if you do this with my friend it doesn't count like ugh. will they ever get that shit right because it <laughs> seems like they are aware of it and we they can't claim it's impossible well their uh, other games have worked like they've done it with breakpoint they've done it with division they've done it with all these other things so i don't know why you can't like it's so weird like they they were they were close with far cry 5 where it's like are you aware that you're playing something out of order and 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 it, it's that it's that open world still telling an interesting story as well so to see how this will i would expect this game to have 
probably regions sort of like areas that you have to clear out and you can clear them out in any order you want as you're going maybe through lieutenants to get to to get to uh el presidente um Mm -hmm. you know and and telling the story and finding out about these people and why they are how they are or why the president is how he is and building that that demeanor for him they'll have the little quirkiness of like some weird choices that you get to make and it'll have i i can't wait to see what either specialists you can recruit or over the top weaponry that will have like new dawn had that that gun that shot saw blades <laughs> yeah so like all that stuff is always is is always cool and and then seeing the you know the how they make how they'll make the economy work so it, it's cool um and it's close like this this is the first time they really said far cry 6 and it's coming out in february yep february uh, i don't think they specifically said platforms but everything just because of the Microsoft thing with the yeah. <laughs> Xbox One and Series X, so it'll be out on everything in February. And February which also... seems to be their time when they release their numbered mm-hmm. Far Cry games. So everybody's like, "Oh, why?" You know, like it's just they they leave like Assassin's Creed to the holiday time frame. They leave some of their other games that they think are going to be like like huge franchises, and then Far Cry is still a huge franchise for them. But it just fits in that February March nook for, nook for them. Yeah, and it you know releases before the end of the fiscal year, uh, yeah. you know, so they have like one thing to boost their their numbers. Uh, but like with Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, I worry that this game's coming out too soon because I was really excited about the idea when they were putting that editorial team together to reexamine mm-hmm. how they structure these games. Far Cry is another one of those games. It's just structured in a way that doesn't suit my my playstyle or in terms of. Usually I can only play one Assassin's Creed game a year because, you know, if I play three games a year, I feel like I pl- played the same game mm-hmm. with a different aesthetic. Uh, so being that close to Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed and knowing that all those games are kind of structured the same, it kind of worries me that it's coming out in February. Uh, but I know the editorial team's only been around for like a year, and then also now they have all these resignations they have to get through yeah. that probably affected the editorial team. So we're probably going to see the same sort of game to where it means I might uh, tap out from the Ubisoft games. You know, I'll probably pick one of these three games right. to but, be well, my game. What's really interesting? Wait. What's really interesting to me is the the area that they were showing of this taking place. Like it's it's it looks like it's taking place in a, in a town in a city in a substantial mm-hmm. city um, where who knows I'm sure somebody will decipher this trailer and pick out some silhouette in the background Landmark, and say yeah. what it is um, that but the other ones like Far Cry 5 were taking place like in a county in Montana like it was a big mm-hmm. open space and then the other Far Cry games involved a lot of helicopter and, and moving across broad areas if this can be an open world but more like something a little bit more condensed into like a city um, I think it might be really interesting and and could give a, a, a different gameplay loop of uh, letting them do a little bit more stuff versus it's so open in the in, in their caveat is you can go way over there. And like, I don't want to go way over there. Mm-hmm. The boss is over there. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, because like even like Ghost Recon Breakpoint is, you know, and um, Division has that sometimes where the map is just so big and there's so many dots on the map. And it's like, OK, like those games have their place and and, and they're great. But I would just love to, you know, and I said this with, you know, with Last of Us even, like I would just love something to just be a little bit more straight line driven. Yeah, and that's not seemed to be their thing, but they could change with this one, mm-hmm. uh, especially with it coming out so soon. Like all three, like there the, wasn't the any like, of Far, Cry, Far Cry was the new thing though. Everything else we knew about. Yeah, yeah, no, but in terms of like the pillars of Ubisoft, you know. Um, of their non-casual games, you know, not their Just Dance, which is yeah. probably their biggest pillar. Uh, y- y- when you think of Ubisoft, you think of Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, and some sort of Tom Clancy game. Correct. We're going to have three of their four main games hit within like a five-month period. After they just talked about that they thought they hit us too hard with Breakpoint and Division 2 at the same time. Yes, that is my only concern. That yeah. they're almost like I almost feel like Far Cry could be helped by just moving it just a yeah. little bit uh, further away. And I and I think that maybe their goal is to you know maybe spread it out like you talked about with the editorials. But now like they've already spent this time and resource in you know in in on essentially on prior gen, and they just got to get it out. 
I think that you know yeah, at this they, point in time, like they just got to get this stuff out. I, I guess I'm with you. I I would. Ex- I don't want it to, but Far Cry Six is going to run on current gen, and I don't yeah. want it. And I don't want it to. You guys all know that I want yeah. something to, but it would just alienate Microsoft right now if they they, they couldn't just run it on Xbox One and PS or uh, Series X and PS Five because Microsoft says you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is why I would love if this got delayed. I know that sounds bad, but, yeah, but how like, far you know, until like I, I'm with you. I'm expecting Microsoft to maybe loosen that time frame, but how much are they going to loosen holiday, it by maybe? six months? Like, Hopefully. yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm expecting by next holiday though, or next next holiday, tw- holiday 2021. I feel like is when Microsoft will back down a little bit from their 18 month window, and they will allow one or two developers to get away with it. But can Far Cry be pushed that far back? Probably not. <laughs> so. Right. We'll, we'll, we're gonna have to deal with like three huge yeah, games. Yeah, the concern is uh, is current gen holding it back, you know. Yeah, and the answer probably is yes. Yeah. All right, so that ended the show, um, and then immediately my head went to we didn't see certain things. So what did we not see? Yeah, I I, I put a list of four games that I can think of: uh, yeah. Skull and Bones, which we're, we're, that's dead, right? <laughs> I played it, and I, I guess I, I just don't. I, I don't multiple be- times. Yeah, I don't believe anything that I physically have. Like, I don't believe uh, any game that they put in the hands of press or or content creators to play. I don't like that. That's gotten that far. I, I have a hard time believing it's dead. Okay, but even then, at a certain point, when they do bring Skull and Bones out uh, or talk about it, they have to just release it the same day they talk about it. At this point, right? Unle- and, unless they're putting a, an extensive single player campaign into this game, which is what people were asking for. I, I I don't think we're gonna get a full skull and bones single player multiplayer. I think we might get skull and bones the multiplayer experience, and then it just gets shadow dropped like that day. I think if you're we gonna get skull and bones the multiplayer experience, we would have seen it already. I think it's been so long that that's the best we can get from it. <laughs> to where because something's wrong because it's been what four years, three 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 four years yeah, since they first shown it. I know you played it at two e threes. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't last year. <laughs> so you played right. it like three years ago, uh, or it was shown three, four years ago. It, it, to me, it's either dead or it it's going to be at the point where they're just going to release it as a multiplayer game and it's just going to come out. And yeah, then or you just they'll, save your grace and try to, try to free to play it. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 was also not shown. Uh, but we're also <laughs> learning over time that you and I have learned that that is handled almost... It, it's produced by Ubisoft, but I feel like it's handled by a third party. Well, it, technically, the director, uh, Ansel, I forget the director's name, but I know he no longer works for Ubisoft, or he didn't when they announced Beyond Good and Evil 2, and they brought him in as a like a contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, yeah, I like think they brought is, in his whole studio. This is my game. You guys are just putting it on a disc for me. Like, but So I do yeah, what I yeah. want. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so but it's we still haven't seen it, and yep. it's been two e threes since we've seen it. Yeah, or two years since we've seen it. I've seen it. I got to stop saying e threes like e threes exist. Um, Gods and Monsters. Uh, that was the like Zelda like experience. I think it was called Gods and Monsters. Yeah, which kind of like just uh, ended last year's press conference and yeah got, got a date, and, and people were like, "What? Huh?" And, <laughs> and then a demo leaked on Stadia. Um. A, a month or two ago so it's probably close to being it but maybe they'll be shown later and then of course the beautifully titled rainbow six quarantine <laughs> which i wonder why we didn't see this game yeah so uh, um i mean that's supposed to be the the pve rainbow six style game like the cooperative yes. player versus environment game that looked really cool um kind of yes. gave a like a little bit of a resident evil vibe to it but with the rainbow six tactical the tacticalness um mm-hmm. for me like yeah those games are all like it no talk of breakpoint at all they released something prior to it with like a title update trailer that i like because i was seeing the trailers hit my youtube feed while i was at work today and i was like oh maybe they talked about breakpoint nope um and maybe in a pre-show yeah and then no maybe they no talk about division two which yeah, I forgot Division Two. Yeah, uh, not that I mean they they just they they announced that they just kicked off a new season and they released you know they're releasing um, a raid uh, very it's either it, they just released a raid so they they do they have some 
produce some content for it, but no plan for, you know, we're going to be coming up this, you know, and then it, again, they talked about there's going to be a second Ubisoft forward, but you're coming up on the second year of division two, um, mm-hmm. very soon or the, the third year, like I, it came out in March. So I guess, you know, we're, we're almost, you know, nine months away from the third year of the game, whether at this point in time in the, in the division's life cycle, we had already, st- the, the division two was a thing that we knew was coming and it, it and to see what they may or may not do with the vision franchise going forward is is interesting because i think doing division three might be a mistake versus trying to build on to division two similar to what destiny's been doing yeah uh and then no no just dance which isn't surprising uh, i'm sure just dance is doing fine uh with whatever it does i think it's something uh, that they have a really hard time showing off in a digital only format it's always it was, it was always interesting and fascinating when they showed it at a press conference where there was a couple hundred people watching or they had it on their show floors where they had physical dancers there but i think to to show try to show that off on a digital only event just wasn't gonna yeah. work so. and i wonder with just dance if they're so just dance i think this year uh I don't know if it was the last game. Uh, they introduced like a subscription model mm-hmm. to where it's just like three dollars or five dollars a month. You can get like an unlimited catalog. So I wonder if they're there's no reason for them to show Just Dance because they might just run with the subscription service over releasing a new title every year. Uh, but yeah, those are the Ubisoft games that I can think of that didn't show up. But we'll get another Ubi Forward and. If I had a guess, I would assume that would take place during Paris Games Week, which I believe was scheduled for like the last week of October this year. Uh, Ubisoft, a French company, maybe would want to do Paris Games Week, which then would let them get a chance to talk about Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs one last time before they launch. Mm-hmm. And then they could then have concrete enough stuff to talk about their next gen plans yeah do you think Uh, that the xbox event at the end of this month and then the rumored playstation 5 state of play at the end of august is slowing any of these announcements down for them i wouldn't be surprised to see like gods and monsters pop up at like the microsoft press conference Mm -hmm. uh coming up or like the the sony state of play but i don't know if it slowed them down uh in terms of surprises just because i feel like we know everything that ubisoft is working on right now right and they can't really jump ahead you know they can't announce a new rainbow six game unless they pull out splinter cell uh for sony Mm -hmm. or microsoft i don't think there's anything they have up their sleeves that they can talk about because all their big franchises are coming out within the next year right yeah, no, I mean it's fine. Like I, I'm, I'm good with what they showed. This is pretty much kind of what I expected. They, they are a, a heavy hitter, um, but they're just kind of like one of these ones that could, that they're just going to jab you to death. Versus they don't have a knockout punch, but they, they can just sit there and hit, just hit you in the chin a whole bunch of times until you, <laughs> it, either you give up or you get knocked out. One of the two. <laughs> um, yeah. But they, there's nothing that they're gonna that's gonna come out of you know blindside you that they produce like you know what you're getting when you buy one of these when you buy a far cry or you buy um you know rainbow six or any of these games like you you know what what's coming um they're mayweather not tyson <laughs> yeah so um but again please let us know comment on the facebook group twitter let us know what you think of the event let us know what you think of the coverage uh this will hit this will hit our feeds obviously it'll it'll be like everything else we've done it'll have a different picture so if if you don't care about the ubisoft games you didn't have to listen to it if you did listen to it thank you so much as always um show notes everything uh we have links to the Facebook group, the Discord, Twitter, his Twitter, my Twitter. Um, again, leaving a review, sharing the show, and supporting us on Patreon if you so choose. Our July episode is live. So you have May, June, and July as bonus content. Uh, July episode is origin stories and why we do what we do. Um, and we're still looking for suggestions for other episodes. Um, then And our, our future plans, um, you know, Microsoft's event is supposed to be the end of July, like July 23rd, 25th. Um, so we'll definitely yes. do something like this. Uh, if anything, if anybody comes out of left field and, and, and hits us with a with a hard punch that's worth, uh, you know, worth us doing an episode, if all of a sudden Jeff Keighley breaks some major thing during a summer games week, like we have the ability to sit down and talk about it for a half an hour, 45 minutes. So uh, we'll we'll keep producing content for you guys as long as you guys keep consuming it and telling us that you like it. So. Yep. All right. 
I hope everyone has a great time. We will talk to you uh, if you're listening to this in order. Thirty. The next episode should be on the feed really soon. So have yeah, a great night. In the next couple of days. <laughs> See ya.